Hello and welcome to the channel Learn with Dr. Javed. Today I will be telling the story of the theoretical evaluation of the speed of sound. The scientific analysis for the speed of sound was given first time in 1687 in the first edition of Newton's Principia. Newton gave speed of sound expression as a square root of the ratio of pressure to density of the air. When first published, the calculated speed of sound was around 10% less than that of the measured speed of sound in those days. That was not bad. However, with more accurate measurements, the speed of sound by Newton's equation was 15% less than the measured values. And this was bad. This difference was not small and Newton suggested several corrections in the second edition of the Principia in 1713. Despite producing correct values for the speed of sound, these corrections were not convincing enough. But let us pause a little at this point and ask ourselves whether any time, anywhere in the classrooms and textbooks anything is taught about the derivation of Newton's formula for the speed of sound? The answer is a big no. So how did Newton arrive at this formula? I had to go through Principia to find my answer. The explanation given by Newton is not easily understandable. In Proposition 49 of Book 2 of Principia, Newton explains the speed of sound using analogy of an oscillating column of gas and a simple pendulum. Newton assumes a column of air having pressure at the bottom same as the medium of sound wave transport or atmospheric pressure. The density in column is assumed to be constant throughout and equal to the medium of sound wave propagation. The simple pendulum considered has the same length of string as the length of air column. Newton shows that a wave of wavelength equal to the perimeter of circle with radius A and having frequency of this pendulum has same speed as the speed of pressure pulse or sound in the column of air. The wavelength comes equal to 2 pi A. The period of oscillation is 2 pi under root A by G where G is the acceleration due to gravity. Speed of wave equals wavelength divided by period of oscillation and it comes out to be root G A. Then Newton goes back to the expression for the pressure at the bottom of the air column. P is equal to rho G A. From here the value of G A comes out to be pressure divided by density P by rho. Just putting the value of G A in the speed of sound expression, Newton got his famous formula for the speed of sound being equal to square root of the ratio of pressure and density. Very interestingly, Newton did not talk about the only gas law known to him that was Boyle's law in the derivation of speed of sound expression. Now we come back to the problem of Newton's formula predicting lower values for the speed of sound. Just like Newton, we read Euler also in nearly every field of science and math. By the time of the death of Newton in 1726 or 1727, Euler tried to suggest corrections in the speed of sound depending on temperature, but by 1759 he admitted that no one in the contemporary world knew the cause for excess in the actual speed of sound when compared with the theoretical expression. In the same year, one of the Euler's student, J. L. Lagrange, gave a derivation for the speed of sound. This is the same derivation which is used presently in textbooks and classrooms to derive the formula for speed of sound. In this derivation, a long tube is considered in which a pressure pulse or sound wave progresses. A stationary observer sees the wave progressing at a speed c. The pressure and density in the undisturbed gas are p and rho respectively. Just behind the moving wave front, pressure and densities are P plus dP and rho plus d rho. The medium behind the wave front attains a small speed dV. At this point, it is very difficult to analyze this problem. But Lagrange brought the revolutionary idea of transforming the reference frame and observer is made to move with the wave front. Now, the undisturbed gas is observed to move 
in the wave front with a speed c and this speed gets modified to c minus dv just after the wave front. Mass continuity is invoked across the wave front and we get the products of densities and speed on both sides of the wave front being equal. Of course, the area terms being equal get cancelled out. Neglecting the small term d rho into dv, a simple expression for continuity is arrived at. The momentum conservation across the wave front gives a simplified relation dp is equal to rho c into dv. Now we have continuity relation and momentum relation eliminating dv from both the relations. We get an expression for a speed of sound in a differential form as c square is equal to dp by d rho. This differential expression needs to be expressed in algebraic form using Boyle's law known at the time of Lagrange p by rho is a constant. Taking natural log of both the sides, we get ln p minus ln rho is equal to another constant. Differentiating this expression, we get dp by p minus d rho by rho is equal to 0 or the value of dp by d rho is equal to p by rho. Putting these values, we get an equation for the speed of sound which is same as that obtained by Newton. After obtaining the same expression as Newton, Lagrange pessimistically accepted inability of contemporary science in giving a reasonable explanation. In 1802, Laplace started working on the speed of sound to suggest corrections in the expression. He suggested that temperature increase in the sound wave due to compressions was responsible for increased speed of sound. Several theoretical estimates were made but no experimental evidence or measurements were available. After around two decades with the work going on in the area of measurement of specific heats of gases at constant pressure and constant volume, Laplace attempted the problem of speed of sound in a different way. Laplace felt that Newton has taken the sound waves as constant volume process with pressure belonging to lower heat content. In Laplace's view, it was a constant pressure process with higher heat content and higher pressure. The heat content of a gas being proportional to the specific heat, it only looked logical to divide the pressure by specific heat at constant volume in Newton's equation and multiply it with the specific heat at constant pressure. Thus we get the speed of sound formula with Laplace correction which could accurately predict the speed of sound. The most significant point here is that nowhere the process is called isentropic. In fact, the term isentropic would wait for decades to be defined and used. The term isentropic was defined sometimes in 1873, 50 years after Laplace equation of speed of sound. And I have no idea that for the first time who suggested that sound propagation is an isentropic process. I tried but could not find this info in the available literature. If you have some information about this, kindly tell me in the comment section. Lagrange's derivation of speed of sound when used with isentropic assumption, one gets Laplace's formula for speed of sound. Now let us see that how the derivation goes on. We use the pressure and density relationship for an isentropic process. Take natural log of both the sides and differentiate which results in dp by d rho is equal to gamma p by rho. Now we just put the value of dp by d rho in Lagrange's equation of speed of sound. And it just results in the Laplace equation of speed of sound though with a completely different theory. The ideal gas equation is given as p is equal to rho rt where r is the gas constant and t is the absolute temperature in Kelvin. Note that R depends only on the molecular weight of the gas. We shall use this equation with the speed of sound equation and we get an expression for the speed of sound as C is equal to root gamma RT. This is by far the most commonly used expression for the speed of sound in engineering and science. So here finishes our story of the speed of sound